Special thanks to Patreon supporter Brick Bros 2016 for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare 204 here bringing you another Minecraft World War II aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the North American P-51D Mustang. The North American Aviation P-51D Mustang is an American long-range single-seat fighter and fighter-bomber used during World War II and the Korean War, among other conflicts. The Mustang was designed in April 1940 by a team headed by James Kindleberger of North American Aviation in response to a requirement of the British Purchasing Commission. The Purchasing Commission approached North American Aviation to build the Curtis P-40 fighters under license for the Royal Air Force, or the RAF. Rather than build an old design from another company, North American Aviation proposed the design and production of a more modern fighter. The prototype NA-73X airframe was rolled out on September 9, 1940, 102 days after the contract was signed, and first flew on the 26th of October. The Mustang was designed to use the Allison V1710 engine, which had limited high-altitude performance in its earlier variants. The aircraft was first flown operationally by the RAF as a tactical reconnaissance aircraft and fighter-bomber, um, known as the Mar Mustang Mark I. Replacing the Allison with a Rolls-Royce Merlin resulted in the P-51B-C Mustang Mark III's, and transformed the aircraft's performance at altitudes above 15,000 feet, um, allowing it to compete with the Luftwaffe's fighters. The definitive version, the P-51D, was powered by the Packard V-1650-7, a licensed-built version of the two-speed, two-stage, supercharged Merlin 66. It was armed with 650 caliber machine guns. From late uh, 1943, P-51Bs and Cs uh, were used by the uh, U.S. Army Air Corps, or Air Forces, 8th Air Force, to escort bombers in raids over Germany, while the RAF's 2nd Tactical Air Force and the USAAF's 9th Air Force used the Merlin-powered Mustangs as fighter bombers, roles in which the Mustang helped ensure Allied superiority in 1944. The P-51 was also used by Allied Air Forces in North America, or sorry, North Africa, Mediterranean, it um, Italy, and uh, Pacific theaters. During uh, World War II, Mustang pilots claimed to have destroyed 4,950 enemy aircraft. At the start of the Korean War, the Mustang by then redesignated the F-51 was the main fighter of the United States until jet fighters, including North Americans F-86, took over this role. The Mustang then became a specialized fighter bomber. Despite the advent of jet fighters, the Mustang remained in service with some air forces until the early 1980s. After the Korean War, Mustangs became popular civilian warbirds and air racing aircraft. So yeah, here we have the P-51D in its landed configuration. This is something that we don't do too often in landed aircraft. I'm really trying to kind of um, revisit this and do more of these landed aircraft because I think that they are amazing assets to have on your bases. And really, there's not too many people out there that actually do, um, or really, if any, that do actual accurate uh, landed aircraft at an angle as they realistically would be. Um, so it's kind of a nice design to throw onto your air bases or just nice museum pieces or display pieces to throw on your worlds. Um, either way, it's going to be a really cool uh, piece and uh, something unique as not a lot of people attempt to, uh, like I said, do these angled aircraft as they would actually realistically be sitting in a landing configuration. Um, so we did do the in-flight version, so if you are interested in that, feel free to look at my recent videos and, or at the time of posting this, uh, my recent videos, or um, you can go ahead and very simply just give a search for it and you'll be able to find the in-flight version as well. The uh, in-flight version uses the same color scheme and patterns, so this one here is going to line up perfectly with that one. Just um, obviously things are a little bit more angled and a little bit different. Uh, but overall, should be a pretty uh, good build to throw into your worlds, and um, just overall is a really nice model. Before we go and jump into taking a look at it, though, I do want to go ahead and give special links to Patreon supporter Brick Bros 2016 for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more, you already do feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions, where you can play this Belmont to the channel every month, and in doing so, earn a video request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do I do on my channel, and it's really greatly appreciated. So, again, feel free to check that out. Links always in my video descriptions. With that though, let's go and dive into the P51D um, Mustang in landing configuration. So. Going ahead and giving you an overview from the side here. Um, I just think the side profile of this thing is just absolutely perfect. Um, you can look at actual side profiles of the P51, and I think that this right here just kind of nails it. Um, obviously, it's not going to be perfect, but it's it's pretty dang close, I would say, and how you can get it in Minecraft. Uh, but overall, I'm really happy with the way that the landed configuration came out for it. 
We have obviously the front engine here, that green kind of uh, color on the top there of the uh, aircraft. You have the engine here, obviously the propeller slanted, wings kind of comb down at a slope like so, and uh, lots of good detail on the wings and all that. We have the front wheels here, uh, landing gear and all that stuff. Unfortunately, we couldn't really show the um, little grooves or the little cutouts where the wheels would actually fold up into. So we just kind of have to use our imagination and imagine they're there. Unfortunately, just due to the restrictions of Minecraft, we really aren't able to um, make that perfect. Uh, anyways, though, as we work our way back further, we have the scoop on the bottom there, the whole tail and the rear landing gear and all that stuff. So overall, really nice model and one that's going to make an awesome addition to any of your worlds um, in your bases or basically just really any of your uh, worlds as a nice display piece and something very unique um, to build. So. Anyways, though, with that all out of the way, let's go ahead and move into our first layer, layer number one. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into our first layer, we'll be going ahead and start with layer one. Quick few things I want to mention here is that if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to structure these tutorials, I like to do half on camera, half off. What this means is we're going to build the entire center line of the aircraft, and then from that point, we'll be going ahead and building out to the sides and doing the sides of the, um, the aircraft. Uh... Well, we'll be doing the right side, and it'll be up to you guys to take the right side and copy it over to the left side. It's pretty straightforward, and once we kind of get for the first few layers, it'll make a little more sense of what we're doing here. Um, but yeah, it just helps kind of cut down tutorial time, because both sides of this aircraft are, for the most part, symmetrical. So, um, anyways, let's go and dive into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and place down a block of coal. And this right here is going to be your back wheel, so make sure you have some space there in the front. So we're going to place down a block of coal with a lever coming off this block of coal forward. And then on the side of the block of coal, we're going to place down a, a banner. Now this banner here is going to be a light gray banner that's going to have a black border and a black horizontal line for the center. I'm not going to show you guys how to make it into a loom because it's only two steps. It's pretty pretty simple. And this here will just go on the side of this block here to kind of give it a little bit more of a wheel-like look. Anyways, after that lever there, we're going to then count one, two, three, four, five blocks forward. And then we're going to place down an iron trap door. Now this iron trap door is going to be coming off the top uh, side there of the block and not on the bottom layer like so. We're going to go then count one, two, three uh, blocks forward. And then we want to go and then go two out to the side. So one, two. We're going to place down two polished black stone walls and then a uh, polished anti top side coming off this wall that's closer to the rear wheel. We can then delete any of these blocks here in the center like that we used to build out to the sides here. So basically we should have something that looks like this here from up above. Again, we'll take what we did on the right side here, flip it over to the left side, and this will be the overview of what you have with layer number one complete. With layer one complete, that right there is going to wrap up that layer. Let's go ahead and move on to layer two. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we're going to begin with layer number two. For layer two to go ahead and get started with here, uh, we want to go ahead and begin with by going ahead and go to this iron trap door here. We're going to place an iron trap door on top of that, fall by two black concrete blocks back from that iron trap door. Then we're going to place down a smooth quartz block. And actually, sorry, we're going to place down a second iron trap door on the bottom of that first black concrete block. So just one more on the bottom there. Um, but basically, once we get to this point, we're going to place down a smooth quartz block a narrow brick top slab, a smooth quartz top slab, a uh, andesite wall. On the sides of the andesite wall, we're going to place down a birchwood sign. Then come off the wall itself, we're going to place down an iron trap door and then two polished andesite top slabs. After that's complete, we want to go ahead and then go to the front here. We're going to skip a space from this iron trap door and then we're going to place down two andesite walls coming off of it like so. We can then delete that block right there. And that right there is going to make our center line. Moving to the sides here, we're going to place down a polished andesite stair coming off that iron trap door like so, and then we're going to place down a polished down inside up down stair, and then a narrow brick top slab after that polished inside up down stair there for that scoop there on the bottom of the aircraft, as well as a skeleton skull that would go on the side here of this quartz block. With that done, we want to go and then place down an inside wall on top of this polished inside block like so, and then at this point, if you are on Java, we can go ahead and use a tricky little technique here, or not really tricky, but a little uh, sticky technique to make this look a little bit nicer there for this support leg. Now again, this is going to be a Java only feature. We're going to go ahead and do the slash give command. So we'll do slash give space at P and we're going to type in Minecraft colon debug stick. And this should autofill, but this right here is what the command should look like. Press enter and it should give you this glowy stick. With this glowy stick, we're going to go ahead and then go up to the anti walls here. We're going to basically um, left click it. And we can go and change the directions here. Now your directions may vary. Um, you want to make sure that you have uh, selected um, the direction on the walls. And you want to make sure that you extend them going from the front. We're going to go and raise this all the way up. And also going to the back. So just like that. So it's raised up and it looks like that there. Kind of a sneaky little technique to get that to fill in a little bit better. But a very cool one nonetheless. If you're on um, a newer version, 
of Minecraft, such as Bedrock or Pocket Edition. Obviously, you won't be able to do this. Um, good alternative is really just a place on the wall. Um, this is just kind of an extra little feature that you can do if you're on Java, unfortunately. Um, or maybe a polished downside stair or something. I don't know. You can mess around with it and figure something out. But the wall there is kind of what the best option is we have for that. Anyways, though, the last thing after that is to go ahead and grab some Wither Skeleton Skulls. And we're just going to chuck them down here on top of these blocks just like that. After that's all done, though, that right there is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number um, two. And with that, let's go ahead and move on to layer number three. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer three. For layer three to get started with, you're going to place it on a polished andesite block on top of this andesite wall. And then an iron trap door can run that polished andesite block going forward. We're going to go then go back from this polished andesite block. One, two, three, four, five blocks. So you have a total of six there. We're going to then place down a smooth quartz block on top of this one here. A black concrete block, a smooth quartz block, a black concrete block, three polished andesite blocks, and then one red concrete block that should stick off on the end there, like so. After that, going to the side, we're going to place down an iron trap door coming off this polished andesite um, full block, then a polished andesite top slab behind it, and then after that, we're going to place down one, two, and three polished andesite full blocks back. We're going to go then place down an air brick stair here, a diorite wall, a narrow brick wall, a white stained glass pane, and then a black stained glass pane after that along the side there for our invasion stripes. Continuing on, we're going to place down an air brick top slab coming off this um, slab there, two black concrete blocks like so, and then two narrow brick slabs back after that. Taking our smooth quartz, we're going to go ahead and place down a smooth quartz top slab here, two smooth quartz full blocks back, and then a smooth quartz slab there on the end. Next row is going to be an andesite wall coming off the side there of that quartz top slab, two black concrete blocks, and then another brick slab on the end. Our next row will be a polished andesite top slab coming off the side there of that wall. We then want to grab a polished andesite stair, and we're going to place down an upside down stair here, followed by a polished andesite full block, and then a polished andesite slab directly after that. We're going to go then place down two polished andesite top slabs here, followed by a second row of two. And then one that comes off the forward one like so. Behind that, we're going to place down an iron trap door. We're going to then place down two iron trap doors. And then one like that coming off that first one there on the front. And after we have that all done right there, that is going to basically wrap up what we have there for uh, layer 3. Here's what it should look like from the top down view. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number 4. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer 4. For layer 4 to get started with here, we're going to go ahead and place down a polished andesite block on top of this iron trap door here in the very front. Followed by a second polished andesite block and then a polished andesite top slab to go ahead and form up the front like so. Going back from this polished andesite block, we're going to place down two more. So in total, we have a row of four going back from that polished andesite top slab there on the front. We're going to go then either leave a space of four or leave a or fill this in with, a, with four black concrete blocks. Either way, if you do leave a space of four, you have interior space. You don't really have much to work with, but you have something, I guess. Uh, if you choose to go ahead and do this method, just black concrete closes off the um, inside here from the outside. So uh, go ahead and pick whatever you want to do there and whatever you do, um, you know, you have your, those four blocks placed. We're going to go then place down a smooth quartz block, a black concrete block, then a row of three of green terracotta, two polished andesite blocks, and then a red concrete block there on the end. After that, going to the sides, we're going to place down a uh, row of one and two, like race stained glass paints, followed by a polished andesite full block, a polished andesite stair, one, two, three, andesite walls, a Another brick wall, a diorite wall, a nether brick wall, and then one, two, three green stained glass panes. Come off this polished andesite block here. We're going to place down one, two, three, four polished andesite slabs at the side, and one, two, three daylight detectors coming off those four uh, blocks like that. And the daylight detectors will be turned to night mode like so. After that, we want to go and then work our way into the wings. We're going to start off with placing down two narrow brick slabs right here, then two quartz slabs, and then two narrow brick slabs like that. We're going to go then take our polished andesite. And we're going to place down a row of eight out to the side here. So coming off of this narrow brick slab here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. After we have that done, we want to go and then place down uh, a daylight detector. So one and two daylight detectors, turn those to night mode, followed by an, two iron trap doors like so. And then we want to go and then grab ourselves our light gray carpet. And we're going to place down two light gray carpet on top of those two iron trap doors there. We're also going to go ahead and grab ourselves our chains and we're going to place down um, chains one two three coming off those polished andesite slabs like so now after we have uh, that all done right there that's pretty much it for that layer I would take both sides copy them over now and one thing we do want to have different on the aircraft is over here on the left side instead of having this iron trap two iron trap doors we're going to have one iron trap door this warp trap door and then a um, 
white carpet. And this right here will just be part of the, uh, the basically the National Star insignia, like we have on the on the uh, tail section, uh, basically on the wings there. And it's only on the left wing um, on top there. So anyways, uh, go ahead and apply that, obviously, to both sides. We're going to go hold off on these banners here a little bit. I'm going to come back to those a little bit later, um, basically next layer, so that we can just do all our banners all together. Uh, but yeah, that right there is going to do it for the overview, or for layer number four. Here's what it looks like, and with that, we'll move into our next layer, layer number five. Alright guys, moving into our next layer here, we have layer number 5. For layer 5 to get started with here, we're going to place down two anvils, one on top of this polished anti top side from the previous layer, and one on top of the full block right behind it. Coming off those anvils going forward, we'll place down a polished anti block, a birchwood top slab, and then a uh, birchwood trap door like that for the front. Going back from the anvils, we're going to place down two more polished anti blocks, and then we want to place down a, um, basically a green uh, terracotta block and then two black or sorry three black stained glass blocks we're going to go then place down one two three uh, green terracotta blocks we're going to place down a piston if you're on java if you're on bedrock or pocket edition i would place down a dark oak wood stair let me show you guys how to make that real quick um, if i can find a dark oak wood stair that would be helpful there we go so you can place down either a piston or a dark oak wood stair like that um, for us on java we're going to go ahead and place down the piston for right now we're going to then place down a dark oak wood slab after that block there, a dark oak wood trap door, a polished anisite slab, polished anisite full block, and a red concrete block there on the end. After that's all done, uh, going back up to the front, we're going to place down a uh, light gray stained glass pane. Coming off the side of this um, block here, we're going to go then place down two polished anisite slabs back, and we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some item frames and black uh, beds. We're going to place down one and two item frames on the side here, and black beds in those item frames rotate like so. If you're on Java, we can go ahead and do the extra feature of placing a dark oaked sign on the sides of the slabs as well, like that. We then place down two inset walls back, a mossy cobblestone wall, two dark oaked slabs, and then after that, we're going to then place down a dark oaked sign on the side there of that slab there. After that's done, we're going to then place down one, two, three, and four mossy cobblestone walls back, and then a zombie head that'll be coming off the side of this piston or the stair right here. If you're on Java, we can go ahead and pull out our debug stick again, so the stick we used earlier, and right click the piston to go ahead and remove that top portion of it like so, and create that nice sloping there on the back of the aircraft. After that's all done, uh, basically the last thing for us really to do for this layer is going to be the banners, which we're going to cover basically the banners from this layer and also the previous layer. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the necessary materials I'll need, and I'll show you guys how to make those banners on the aircraft. Alright guys, so when it comes to making these banners, they're pretty simple to make. Um, what we're going to need is we're going to need a loom, four blue dye, two white banners, two black banners, three white dye, and two green dye. For our first banners here, we're going to go and go into our loom. We're going to place down our white banners and our blue dye. We're going to go and select the blue uh, square in the bottom left-hand corner for our first banner here, and then also the top left-hand corner for the same banner. It's going to create this symbol that looks like this, and we're going to do, go ahead and do the same thing for this other white banner, but just the opposite. So bottom right and top right, like that, to go ahead and make these two banners. After that's done, we're going to go and place down a black banner into our loom and our white dye. For both these banners, we're going to go ahead and place down a stripe through the center there, horizontally, to go ahead and create both these banners here with that white stripe. One of these banners will furrow back into our loom, and we're going to go do a white line that goes across the bottom there, that lower third of the banner like that. And that will create a banner that looks like this. Both these banners now will be placed into our loom with our green dye, and we're just going to select the line that splits the top third, um, like that, of green, and that's going to be done here for both banners, like so. And after we have that all done, um, basically the, what we're going to do now is we're going to go and go to the side of this wall. We're going to place down our black banner. Then we're going to place down our two uh, white banners here. And then our next black banner right here is going to go down like that. And the same thing will obviously be translated over to the other side. However, what does change is the letters here on the aircraft that you can put. Now, as you can see, I put AD. It doesn't really represent anything in particular. But this right here is basically what I chose to use for uh, making or for the letters. Uh, there are plenty of tutorials out there that do show you guys how to make the letter banners, so if you are looking for um, these banners, there are tutorials out there that do show them. I'm not going to cover them in the tutorial because there's 26 different letters you can do, and um, quite frankly, I don't want to limit you guys to just this, so you can go ahead and do whatever you guys want there, make it your initials, make it whatever. Um, doesn't really matter. Just make sure that you have one banner on this side and one letter on this side. So like that. So it reads AD, and we're going to go to the other side here and make sure that it reads AD on this side. So we read left to right, AD, so it's going to be like that on the right side, and AD 
on the left side. So just make sure that that's the that's how it is on both sides, as it definitely makes it a little more accurate and um, you know how it's supposed to be. Anyway, so that right there is going to conclude what we have there for our painters, and with that, that is going to wrap up layer five. Let's move on to layer number six. Moving into our next layer, we have layer six. For layer six to start off with, we're going to place down a yellow concrete block on top of this birch wood slab, and then coming off of it, we're going to place down a yellow shulker box on its side with a wither skeleton skull there for the tip. After that, going back from this yellow concrete block, we're going to place down three green terracotta blocks. If you're on Java, we'll place down two pistons. If you are not on Java, I'd recommend placing down a dark oak wood stair and then a dark oak wood slab. Um, either one will work for this situation. We're going to go then place down a dark oak wood slab right here, and then a narrow brick stair two black stained glass blocks and another narrow brick stair on the back here. We're going to go then place down a dark oak wood slab and then on top of this uh, piston here we are going to place down a dark oak wood fence post. Just keep in mind though that if you are doing this in Java um, and placing down a fence post on top here it will uh, cause the space here to alter so just keep that in mind. Um, you will need your debug stick and just go ahead and need to right click that piston one more time to go ahead and uh, activate it down back to its normal um, look. And then after that uh, lever there, or that sorry, that um, fence post, we're going to place down three barrier blocks back, a polished andesite block, and then a narrow brick wall there on the very end. With that done, going back up to the front, we're going to go ahead and start working our way out to the sides. We're going to place down a wither skeleton skull on the side of the shulker box, a yellow stained glass pane, two green stained glass panes, a mossy cobblestone to wall, two zombie heads like this on these two pistons here, and then a zombie head here at a slight angle like so. At this point here, if you're on Java, we can go ahead and go to our two pistons here and alter them by right clicking them like that. We then want to place down a wither skeleton skull on the side of this stair here, then two black stained glass panes like that, and then a wither skeleton skull at a slight angle on top of that monster skeleton stone wall. After that is all done there, that is pretty much it for this layer, just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything and everything does appear to be good to go. So that right there will conclude what we have there for layer number six. And with that, let's move on to layer number seven. All right, guys, so layer seven here is actually going to be our final layer for the build. Um, let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, to begin with, though, we're going to go ahead and place down a birchwood trapdoor on top of this yellow concrete block and then a dark oak wood trapdoor on top of this green terracotta block. We're also going to place down a dark oak wood trapdoor on top of this black stained glass block right here for the cockpit. Then going back from this, we're going to place down a stone button on this first barrier block, followed by two barrier blocks back, and we just want to place down two stone buttons on the side there of those barrier blocks here, over here to the right side, like so for that cabling. On the back, we're going to go ahead and place down a andesite wall, and then a red nether brick wall on top like that to go ahead and complete the vertical stabilizer. With that all done, that's pretty much it for the structure of this aircraft, and now we're going to move into the props. The props here, we're going to go to this yellow stained glass pane, we're going to go ahead and go up and down from these glass panes like this on both sides here. If you're on Java, we can go ahead and do the extra technique here of actually ridding um, this uh, glass paint. Actually, one thing we'll do here, just to go ahead and clean this up a little bit, we'll actually place down a skeleton skull here instead of that glass paint. So we'll just go ahead and do that on both sides there and that'll help shape that a little bit better. So just replace that or that uh, light gray stainless paint with a skeleton skull. At this point, we're gonna go then go up back and out to the side here for polished blackstone wall for our upwards propellers and then from this we're going to go up and out to the side here with a skeleton skull so basically up and out to the side like so and that's going to do it for our top propellers our bottom ones are going to come down from this wall forward and out to the side here and our skeleton skulls are going to basically do the same thing kind of coming down and out to the side same thing for this propeller like so and our skeleton skull like that that comes down from it. So that basically our props should look something like that, um, kind of angled. And with that all complete there, that is going to wrap up my design here for the landed version of the P-51D Mustang. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. I mean, we don't have too many of these landed aircraft tutorials at this at the point of making this video, and hopefully there will be more coming in the near future. But this is definitely a very unique tutorial and something that you're not going to see all the time. So I definitely recommend... Uh, Take a look at this one. I also have a BF-109 um, at the time of posting this video available as well. So if you are interested in another landed aircraft from World War II, definitely feel free to check that one out as well. Uh, with that though, that's going to do it for this uh, tutorial. Uh, again, a big special thanks to Brick Bros 2016 for making this tutorial possible. And feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is, will be down in the video description. As well as if you do want to use this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This is anything from a sign of the build, tweet to my channel, or this video, if this doesn't bring you social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to use it for a project you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. With that though, uh, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys all so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett204, and I'll see you guys next time.